Hello all. So in this video I'm going to be making a Bosch and Maffel guide rail adapter for my router. By sharing I hope it will give some ideas to you folks whatever your router or rail type. Made from solid alley plate, mine or one like it can be made using just a bandsaw or jigsaw and a drill. Further buying the aluminium plate to make one is a good deal cheaper than buying one from a manufacturer. I had absolutely no intention of making one until I was in receipt of this cool looking router bit. As you can see, it cuts a profile through a board, or indeed solid wood, leaving a slither of material that when folded 90 degrees, in theory, allows you to create a pleasing, seamless outside radius on corners. Next week, I'll have my full review of this router bit and my experience with it. And trust me, if you've seen these router bits and been considering one, I think you need to wait until you've watched my video first. So why did it prompt me to make a guide rail adapter for my router then? Well, firstly, the hole in my OEM Bosch guide rail adapter isn't big enough. Plus, I've never been that happy with the Bosch OFA guide either. Secondly, the router bit needs a guide rail adapter, as even using a back edge of the rail as a guide, the bit wants to pull in one direction or another and go for a wander, even pushing hard up against the rail edge. The line and the work need to be held fast for a straight cut. And so, on to my router guide rail adapter. On a short piece of guide rail here, I have two scraps of 4mm alley plate either side of the spine on the guide rail. Conveniently, with the fence rods for my Bosch GMF 1600 router in place, the height between the tabletop and bottom of the rods is about 9mm, equal to that of the guide rail and a 4mm plate combined. Obviously, I'm going to need to square these plates up. I'll also need to join them down the centre and, using this, my last scrap of 10mm alley stock, I'll make four small blocks to sit either side of the rods these particular rods being 10 mil diameter. This should give us the basics of a guide. All right, so I know I said you only need a bandsaw or jigsaw and a drill to make this, but that's assuming you had new stock to work from. Pretty much all my scraps have numerous curves from making chair components. So I'm using a track saw to give me a couple of straight square edges. And just to note, you'll find doing this with a circular wood saw blade of any description, just make sure it's a higher tooth count, say 48 teeth or so. For the rest of the sizing, I'm at the bandsaw. 6mm, 10 TPI blade, cuts aluminium well, if not as clean as a plunge saw, mitre saw or table saw. But it's much safer and more controlled as the pieces get smaller. Here I have the 10mm alley scrap marked for four small pieces. You can see that through its existing holes, I've screwed it to a bit of ply to keep fingers away from the blade. Whatever the tool you're cutting with, if it's a small piece, you can always work out your hole positions in advance and drill them out, allowing you to mount it, making for easier, safer cutting. With a random orbital clamped to the bench, with some 180 grit, I'm easing over the edges and making particularly sure the edge that will run against the guide rail spine is nice and smooth. I have this edge marked. Careful if doing this as the sander can snatch the work if you don't go in confident and with a firm grip. If you don't fancy it or don't have one, just use a hand sanding block or a file. I've got the two base plates positioned and marked, joining plate on top already drilled. I go through its holes just to mark for corresponding holes in the base plates below. Just like that. Then drill them out. I step up the drill sizes a little as I go, and these finish at 5.5mm for a little wiggle room for M5 screws. I then create a countersink for the screw heads on the underside. You can use a couple of quick spins with the countersink on the top side of the holes too to deburr if needed. From here on, the process is basically the same in terms of cutting and drilling everything. Joining the plates, I have these M5 machine screws topped with nylock nuts. Getting these positioned just right so they were neither too tight nor too loose was tricky. I would have it half on, half off the rail and tighten down. But every time I swapped ends to tighten the other side and tried it out, there'd be some sticking point. In the end, what helped me get positioning right for perfect slide was lucking out and finding a wafer thin trimming in the waste bin exact size of the rail spine. Though I was prepared to cut one especially. With the plates half off the rail, you jam in the shim to maintain the spacing, then tighten down. So the 10mm pieces already have some M5 threaded holes in. The size of these blocks give me limited room, so I'll reuse these holes and threads to attach the plates. Of course this means each one will have to have its own specific orientation and place. With a nice new bit of stock you'd have no such worries, so you could make all the holes linear. Like before, pieces positioned, I use the existing holes to poke a drill bit through for a few spins just to mark the base plate. I also mark the blocks too so I can remember their position. Then, again, the holes get gradually opened out to 5.5mm for M5 and with a countersink underneath. Then simply screw in place. 
quick check for positioning before adding the inside blocks. I really don't want to have to fight the adapter getting the router in when it's all finished. Before cinching down the inside blocks, I add a 10mm packer to maintain the gap and stop the blocks from spinning as I tighten. Another one to add to the list of three-handed jobs in the workshop, but that will do it. So with the screw hole positions being a random spread, my capping piece of alley has to have its holes marked equally as random, just avoiding the existing holes. This involved a bit of a game of peekaboo. The capping piece is 6mm alley plate by the way. There will be some threaded holes through this shortly for locking thumb screws, and this thicker plate allows for a bit more thread. Capping plate holes drilled to 5.5mm, then the matching holes in the blocks drilled to 4.2mm, just deep enough to allow for the screw. Then tapped for M5, and screwed in place. With the router in place, I marked for threaded through holes each side for the locking thumb screws. Again, drilled at 4.2mm for an M5 tap. Couple of thumb screws, and really, that's the basic guide rail adapter complete. You could stop there. I do, however, have a few more scraps of plate, a couple of thumb screws and such, and so thought to myself, why not take this up a notch by giving it a micro adjust and some friction adjustment. So if you can stand to watch anything else get cut, drilled and tapped, stick around while I turn this adapter up to 11. The first edition is one I should have done last in hindsight, but this knob is from the front end of my Mafel KSP85 circular saw that now forms my table saw, so this is going spare. I just fancy the idea of a grab hold on the adapter. Standing upright, it'd get in the way of the router handles when close to the rail, so by way of two corner brackets for 2020 profile, I concoct a way to have it mounted at 45 degrees. The first bracket attached to the knob angles it at 45 degrees. A second bracket sat on top will give me a flat surface for the mounting screw. I don't have to worry about countersinking the through bolt head as it will run in the shallow channel in the guide rail. Sexy red washer because you know my style. This stops the nut from misbehaving in slightly larger holes of the brackets when tightened. And a nylock nut to lock it. Lopping off the top of the remaining screw thread and that's the handle done. Definitely a worthwhile addition that one. Feels like you're properly distributing your force. Lovely stuff. Now the tricky bit, creating the micro adjust. I'm drilling out two small blocks in 8mm plate here, going through the bit sizes up to 10mm. I have a piece of 4mm plate underneath that is getting marked in the right spot as I drill through. On that plate, I position the second block for the 100mm centers for the rods from the router, then clamp and drill it. I then drill the 4mm plate out to 10mm in those marked spots. Rather than two 8mm pieces and a 4mm joining plate like I'm doing, you'd be better off using a whole piece of 8mm. I have numerous pieces of 8mm, nearly all of which has holes from previous uses, so here I'm using what I have how I can. So anyway, my piece is temporarily fixed together with M10 bolts so I can drill and tap fixing holes. M5 tapped on the red dots on the small blocks through hole in the joining plate. You're getting well acquainted with this drill and tap process now I'm sure. Screwed down and temporary bolts removed, I drill and tap from the top down into the 10mm hole for locking thumb screws. Now we can have a little look and try it on for size. Slips on the rods nicely and fully locks down. So far so good. Right, so I know I just said I had no clean 8mm alley plate, but I do need a piece. So here I'm cutting off a 20mm rip from one of my routing machine gantry plates that it won't miss. This piece will sit on the back of the base plate here. Two little U sections cut out for the rods and drilled and tapped into its bottom edge for M4 screws. That's pretty tight on drill space. Right, so it didn't go that well for M4 as my first attempt broke my only M4 tap, half of it still stuck in the hole. This meant I had to go to M5 which pushes my holes in the base plate close enough to the edge to deform it. Doesn't look pretty but they'll still work, just gutted as it's a bit of a mess. A bit of hole realignment and it's a process of using the existing holes again in the base to mark the new piece, then drill and tap. Two more 10mm holes, again to allow the rods to slide through, this time with the bottom cut out of the bandsaw for minimum obstruction. You can see I've already screwed it to the base plate there. Didn't film it for some reason. I also seem to have missed out by drilling an 8mm hole for an M8 bolt to the rear locking plate. I think this might have been during a full SD card episode. Anyways, snugged up, bolt through, I can roughly mark where the tapped hole needs to go. These two parallel plates sit at slightly different heights, but thankfully, the bottom of the bolt should just clear the central joining plate. Now 
all drilled and tapped, it's assembly time to see if it works. Washer either side of the back locking plate, then two nuts to lock position. A tension spring on each rod, these borrowed from the router's fence. As I'm using its rods anyway, they might as well be on here as there'd be nothing to keep them in place on the fence without them. Then screw in the bolt. I haven't sourced an appropriate adjustment knob for the micro adjust yet, but I can just use a socket for now. With the drill attached for dramatic effect, rear thumb screws locked, front ones loosened, you can see the adjust is quite effective. I'm pretty pleased with that. After a bit of machine wax on the thread, it's plenty smooth enough even to turn the adjustment bolt by hand. Right, so final detail. Some small degree of adjustment between the slot in the base and the spine of the guide rail. I found this little bracket already with holes in my bits box. One will take a fixing screw, the other an adjustment screw. As before, I use the existing holes to mark hole positions on the base and the adjustment hole I want quite close to the slot. All drilled out, the underside gets a countersink. Back at the bandsaw, I cut a slot in the base right through the screw hole and passed it by about 15mm to give it some flex room. Now to add the screws. I don't overdo it on the screw closest to the slot yet. Even though the holes in the little blocks are threaded, I'm still topping off with nylocks. This should mean when I'm done tinkering about, they should stay set, not affected by vibration. So the idea with this, in case you can't see it yet, is the screw nearest the slot, as you cinch it up, it slides up and into the countersink, slightly pushing apart the slot through its hole. This can help dial out any slop and let you control the friction between the rail if you want. I had like a hair of play, almost unnoticeable, but you could sort of hear it more than see it. Now though, I have zero discernible play and it still glides smooth. Really found a sweet spot and it worked better than I thought. And with that all fully assembled, it's done. It's hard to know when I write these transcripts quite what the final edit will be, but I hope the sheer amount of drilling shots wasn't too boring. Still, if nothing else, the repeats of various drilling and bandsaw shots do at least demonstrate that aluminium is worth having a go with, and you can create some accessories beyond the performance of legit manufacturers, even if they don't quite have that final finish. My little slop adjustment here, for example, coupled with a fairly precise fit to begin with, it allowed me to properly dial in a sweet spot where there's absolutely no wiggle between adapter and rail, yet it still glides free and smooth. The micro adjust gives me 30 millimeters of movement. If I can remember right, that's about five or 10 mil more than the Bosch guide rail adapter. And despite its crude knocking together, the micro adjust is smooth as well. As I said, helped along with a little machine wax on the threads, I can just about move the router's weight, just grabbing the bolt with my fingers although it's much easier using this universal socket. Who'd have thought I'd find another use for that so soon? At the time of writing this, I've used the adapter quite a lot and having the large handle or knob on it, I found really great in use. It just feels so controlled. Why companies don't put handles on their adapters like this is a mystery to me. This is my Bosch OFA guide rail adapter. Generally, it's a slick bit of kit, has micro adjust and can seat a number of routers. It also has a widget available to drop a pin into the rails with holes at 32mm spacings. But fitting is a fiddly process. Usually by three screws, you have to remove your router's sub base and then wrestle around with it to try and locate your holes among the many available. You can see I drew on in marker my router's position to help. And it's that much of a pain, you really have to want to use it, you know what I mean? Further, even when it's locked, you should be able to see there, there's some movement. This isn't play or slop necessarily between the adapter and rail. It's flex in the plastic guides. Yeah, I've never really liked that. It has served its purpose, I suppose. But now I've made this new one, I can't see me ever using the Bosch one again. In case anyone's wondering about where on the rail from the aluminium adapter, remember I didn't show it every time, but every piece was sanded and filed smooth. The base, numerous times. It's also been waxed. Also worth remembering that the saws I use on the rails all have metal bases and run on the rails daily with no issues. I did toy with the idea to build some adjustability into my adapter for my other small Maffel routers, but they'd also need a sub base to lift it up. If I find a worthwhile way of doing this, and by worthwhile I mean easy, I'll do a follow up video. I have been giving it some thought. In terms of aluminium cost to make this, if you shop around on say eBay, you could buy a 100mm square of 8mm, a 200mm square of 4mm and a nugget of 10mm for under £20. The Bosch Guide Rail adapter is around 60 quid. 
Of course, not everyone will have the same router or rails, but take some measurements and adapt what you've seen here, and you too can have a quality rail adapter. And my one does feel industrial quality compared to the Bosch. If you tune in next week, you'll see this rail adapter in action as I battle with that new router bit. So that'll do it, I think. I welcome any comments or questions below. Please hit like if you did, sub if you aren't already. The thanks button is there if you want to show your appreciation in that way. And as ever, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.